my name's uh, Rob Waldy. Um, I'm a uh, uh, distinguished engineer with uh, OpenGear. Um, uh, what that precisely means, uh, I, I guess, is uh, anyone's guess. But uh, um, what I mainly do is, is work, I guess, within the product management team um, and work uh, closely with a lot of our strategic customers um, and our solutions engineering team as well, I guess, to, to help realize and build some of these, um, um, some of these new products where where um, we're launching. Um, so, so really, I guess today uh, it, it's all about introducing this this new product, this new NetOps console server. Um, that um, that is, I guess, a little bit more than a product launch, though. As as Marcio was saying in the in the previous uh, in the previous segment, uh, this is uh, really moves us closer to realizing this vision of a a, a network resilience platform and having um, a, a solution that does a lot more than just uh, console management. Um, so I've got a couple of uh, segments to go through today. So there's a little bit of slideware, I apologize, um, to, to kind of um, to start with. Um, but really, just I just want to introduce the, the new products, go through some of the feeds and speeds and things like that, and give a bit of context about how the solution all kind of clicks together. And then I'll, and I'll um, the second segment's really more uh, a live demo. So that, that's kind of the fun bit. Um, so let's get started. Uh, so I guess, yeah, what's this network resilience platform? I guess conceptually we've gone through a, a few of the, the ideas of the kinds of things it can do, but if you, you kind of look at it at a layered approach, really it kind of starts at the top with this um, uh, Lighthouse uh, central management uh, system. So that's, that's basically a, a VM that we build. Um, so um, you're, you're free to, to deploy that wherever you want. You can uh, deploy it in your own hypervisor or you know, Amazon AWS or something like that. And really um, its mission in life is to sit there and provide uh, centralized uh, console access to all of your all, all of your network, as, as Marcio was saying. So I guess it's you know to um, maybe lay, labor a, a cliche. It's the central pane of pane of glass for all of your um, or single pane of glass for all of your uh, your out of band consoles. Um, but it does more than that. It has this uh, another uh, software component. So these things called NetOps modules that uh, I guess plug into Lighthouse and uh, allow it to to do more than console management. So um, as, as Marcio was saying, it allows you to do things like turn up new networks just using your out of band uh, management infrastructure. Um, and it also allows you to access not just consoles, but uh, the ethernet based management um, interfaces. Like they could be you know, API ports or they could be even just you know, getting to a, a server service processor like an HP ILO as uh, network um, functions uh, increasingly are virtualized and, and might not even have a physical console. So it's providing that same kind of um, access and resilience to, to ethernet and virtual type infrastructure as well. Um, so that I guess the software components of the resilience platform, but at the foundation is really our appliances. So that's um, you know, still, still very foundational to our, to our system because that's what's providing the, the remote site presence. Um, so these boxes are uh, physically co-located next to the infrastructure that they're managing, you know, your routers, your switches, your PDUs, what have you. Um, or your white box servers increasingly. Um, and they're also, they've got that uh, infrastructure proximity as well. So they're, they're physically wired in, you know, they've got the RS-232 console cable plugged into the management port uh, or the USB console cable or the ethernet uh, management port as well. So that's our, um, I guess our smart out of band console servers are the ones that have really become kind of the industry, the, the industry leaders, um, are the gold standard, I guess, in, um, in out of band management um, uh, appliances. Um, but what we're really introducing today is this new generation, a new ger generation of hardware and an all new software stack as well. So we're calling these NetOps console servers, acknowledging they're doing uh, you know, a bit more than just your traditional console servers. Um, and really that's taking this kind of uh, out of band management and resilience type feature set. And then um, also kind of extending that to be able to do more um, things like um, network automation and, and, uh, and uh, other things. So I'll maybe taking another view, just a topological view, just I guess to put this in, in context. Um, so basically this is what a typical kind of deployment will look like. You've got um, Lighthouse will be either in the cloud or on your, you know, your central, um, central data center or, or NOC type locations. Um, and the uh, NetOps console servers will be deployed um, all around your data centers, your colo sites, your IDFs, your uh, remote offices, your branch offices, and your edge, little edge data centers as well. As I said, they've got the, the proximity and uh, they, they're you know, physically connected into the, the, the management ports um, to, your, to your managed devices. In this case, your managed devices, your, your routers, your switches, any other kind of critical infrastructure. Um, and what they do is they basically establish these northbound VPN tunnels uh, back up into Lighthouse. So this is, I guess, how they start to form this, um, this resilient uh, fabric 
um, because um, what happens is if uh, Lighthouse is not reachable via the primary circuit or if there's no primary circuit at all, for example, you're turning up a new network, the NetOps console servers can actually use their inbuilt cellular uh, capabilities to kind of uh, to, to reestablish that tunnel and completely independent of any other kind of networking that, that's on that remote site. So that's, that's basically how it works. Um, from a user's point of view, uh, so we've got all of our kind of, you know, users, they might be in the, the central ops center or they might be a, a road warrior who's, you know, working from a hotel room, maybe, maybe not so much a hotel room, working from home. Um, and they're, they're basically, you know, they're mainly concerned with getting from kind of point A where they're sitting to, to point B, which is um, the, to the managed device console to actually do their job. So what Lighthouse does is basically lets them use their standard tools, their browsers, their favorite SSH client to come in and say, just give me a console to this problematic uh, Cisco router or you know Juniper or Easter or Brocade or what, what have you um, um, router it at, um, and, and Lighthouse um, basically will proxy that connection through. So um, it kind of makes it easy to, to do the, 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 the basic um, bread and butter uh, console management. That's kind of what it's built for. So recently we actually added the ability to run Docker containers in Lighthouse. So you can start kind of doing some new and cool, cool things that we'll kind of go through uh, in the demo. Uh, and today with the NetOps console servers, we've actually added the ability to run the Docker containers at the edge as well, which means you can run these management agents and things like that directly on your out-of-band infrastructure. But it also means um, that you can kind of uh, use these containers in concert to do some uh, a, couple, a couple of cool things as well uh, that again, I'll, I'll demo. Um, and maybe to, to Marcio's point at the, uh, during the previous segment, um, these, um, uh, you know, Central operators, they might be might, might be humans or, or I guess cats in this instance. Um, they might be human operators reaching consoles, but increasingly we're finding they're actually code. So uh, it's actually automation code, might be a management agent or something like that, an API, a Paramico script, an Ansible playbook or something like that. They're the actual, they're the clients of our of our, uh, our management, uh, resilient management fabric that, um, that we're providing. And uh, hopefully unlike uh, Roomba, Roomba Kitty there, um, your automation code doesn't get stuck in a, an endless loop. Um, so I guess going into a little bit of the kind of the feeds and speeds, since this is, is a, you know, a product introduction, um, this is the new um, OM2200, which is our, our data center grade, our, I guess our, our high density um, uh, management appliance. And what I've done is I've actually compared it there on the left to our IM7200, which is our um, um, our smart out of band equivalent, I guess, um, that we've had in the market for some time. Um, and really just to contrast and, and, and show you kind of what, what new, new kind of capabilities the, the OM has, um, the NetOps console server has. Um, so I guess the big one is, is the, uh, the processor. It's, it's not an ARM uh, system, of a chip, uh, system on a chip. It's a full x86-64 um, bit processor. Um, it's got a lot more horsepower, I guess, in terms of you know, doing some benchmarking and, and that kind of thing. Um, I was just, you know, generating some keys and doing some compression and stuff like that. And I reckon it's probably about five to 10, five to 10 times gruntier than the, than, than the uh, IM7200. Um, it's got a bunch more memory. It's got a bunch more storage, um, you know, cause it's just really built to run containers. Um, also the storage is MSATA. So in terms of performance, it's orders of, of magnitude kind of uh, faster than the, than the, uh, the, the IM7200. Uh, Marcio talked about the TPM chip that's, that's built into the, to the system. So we're able to actually secure our boot, boot process. We actually um, control the manufacturing process. So we can actually uh, guarantee that the, these uh, boxes, as they, they, they come off the production line, you know, they're only booting, they've got a per device lock bootloader. They can only boot open gear sign firmware and they actually do full disk encryption. So all the writable storage is encrypted. Um, out of the box, so you can do this, th do these um, applications like um, you know um, shipping them to the remote sites without having to worry about the the, the chain of, of custody. Um, software, I'll go into on a separate slide. Uh, yeah, so basically these are the the high density up to forty eight RS two thirty two ports, eight USB in in the one U, and also with that cellular option as well with the global cellular uh, module that's that's built into the box itself. That's the OM twenty two hundred. We also have this OM twelve hundred. Um, I guess. Um, what I've done here is I'm comparing it to the ACM 7000, which is, um, which is a very popular product for us. It's a small, small form factor smart Ube console server, um, but it's probably not really a fair comparison because unlike like the going from IM7200 to ACM 7000, 
going from uh, the OM2200 to the 1200 uh, is literally just kind of like a chopped down 2200, same CPU, a uh, little bit less RAM and storage, but you know, same software stack, same TPM chip. Um, uh, and it's, it's just really a very, very powerful kind of, kind of system. I guess the main difference is it's got the internal power rather than the, the external. Um, I think that this is a, a gonna be a very important product for us as well. So this is the IM12, let me get this right, the 12088E-L. So it's actually got a, um, it's got four, sorry, it's got eight um, RS-232 console ports, but it's also got an eight port um, VLAN capable switch, um, which is a first for our, um, uh, for our products as well, having that v VLAN capability, um, which I think will be um, um, uh, pretty cool. So you can deploy one of these at a remote site and you've got basically a console server and a management switch in a box for uh, you know, a smaller deployment. And again, with that cellular option as well. Uh, so um, I don't know if there's any kind of questions about the, the feeds and speeds. There's heaps more information on the website and you, know, um, you can drill down into as much detail as you want. Um, but what I guess it really kind of boils down to is um, our, new, our new hardware um, gives, you know, has a lot of security features and it has a lot, of, a lot more grunt, a lot more uh, horsepower. Um, what's this mean for our users? Um, okay, going from, from an ARM-based system um, and a more of a traditional embedded system to an x86 box and having that more RAM means you can run off-the-shelf code, basically. You can pull down containers from Docker Hub, you can run your own scripts, um, you don't have to worry about running in a constrained type environment, it's got enough grunt to do, um, to run, say, a full Ubuntu um, uh, Docker image in there, for example. Uh, we've got the TPM security, which we've kind of um, touched on. So that's really about assuring the, the trusted boot process. It's about making sure the device hasn't been, or the appliance hasn't been tampered with, uh, but also encrypting and securing all of the, um, the on-box um, writable storage as well. So, you know, allowing you to do things like load on all of your uh, configs for, uh, for a remote deployment, uh, for a remote day one um, turn up, and being able to literally FedEx them to the remote site without worrying about that information leaking along the way, because um, it's, all, it's all encrypted by, by TPM. Um, and, and more storage, as we said. So you, it's not just configs you can store in here for, for day one provisioning. You can also have full uh, you know, VM images. You can have full um, uh, Cisco IOS images and things like that. So you can either repair or, or provision networks um, using basically this, this uh, on-site storage. May I ask a quick question? Yeah, go for it. Uh, Robert, um, so thinking in uh, where I use out of band very often, which is both like in data center cores, uh, co-location facilities, things like that, I'm seeing a lot in of that kind of a need in um, very large geographically dispersed SD-WANs. So a Cisco yeah. SD-WAN, for example. Can you discuss a little bit more in depth how Open Gear can work with maybe any vendor, but if you want to talk about Cisco, that's fine considering that there is both that local device, you know, a little bit of configuration to get things up and running or, or repaired. And then also the vendor hosted SD-WAN, which kind of throws a wrench into it. How does Open, uh, Open Gear fit into that? Again, mission critical stuff, so. Yeah, um, I, I guess from the SD-WAN perspective, the, the idea is you can kind of deploy this, this box um, or this solution or VM or what have you um, to a remote site, and then you know everything's taken care of by the cloud. Um, so what we we typically see in those kind of scenarios is, um, you know, there is there is a lot of kind of you know marketing pixie dust as to this completely disperses with your your need for remote management, but um, that isn't actually the the situation we're seeing on the ground. And we've had a, a lot of large um, deployments. Um, uh, you know, they've kind of started and then stopped, and they realize actually we've kind of got to go back to first principles. We need to provide. Um, not just remote management, which for SD-WAN is, you know, the console is not going to be as important, but you might have, you know, you might actually want to reach the, 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 um, the UI or something like that to do some, some on-device management, um, but also providing that bootstrap network to allow the SD-WAN um, um, uh, appliance um, or VM or what have you, whatever it is, to reach, reach, the, um, reach its, its controller on day one or its orchestrator on day one. So we can actually utilize our inbuilt cellular connectivity to, to provide that that connectivity on day one or on the, mm -hmm. on the, the bad day when, when your, your, your primary WAN's gone down or you know, WAN's have gone right. down. And that would be the case also for my cloud routers, whether they be, uh, but I'm starting to see now the development of like purpose-built cloud native routers. And I'm not just gonna spin up an, a CSR, for example. So mm -hmm. how would that work? 
Yeah, yeah. So, so really, I mean, I guess at, at some point, there's always going to be some kind of underlying infrastructure. Um, so mm -hmm. that, that router is going to have to run on something. And we're, we're about providing the connectivity to that to that infrastructure, with, to that management portal, or management service or what have you, whether it's like a, a human or whether it's a, a cloud based controller. Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure if I've answered the question uh, too well, but maybe if I kind of go through the um, the, the system in, in um, and a mm -hmm. bit more kind of practical detail, it'll, it'll become apparent. Um, Great. Cool. And also, I must. Um, I'm not sure whether to apologise or to take credit for this um, for this awesome picture here. And um, when I came up with this um, slide deck, I'd been um, uh, sheltering in place with uh, with uh, my two pre preschool kids, and it's all about a. Uh, all about, all about kittens and rainbow unicorns in our house at the moment. So, um, yeah, as I mentioned, our system, you know, it's a self-sufficient, I guess, resilient fabric. So it has the built-in uh, connectivity um, to, to establish this, this cellular connectivity to, that's either going to be a backup uh, WAN circuit um, or it's going to be a dedicated management, um, a management um, uh, 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 connection. So, again, if you're familiar with our existing smart outer band feature set, um, we uh, provide basically that same kind of feature set. It can either um, act as a, as a kind of a, a backup circuit to get back to Lighthouse, or it can actually hand off its uh, cellular IP address to a downstream um, um, device, and that might be an SD-WAN uh, router on that remote site, um, and it can use that as a, a, back out, a backup circuit as well. Um, as I mentioned, there's also a VLAN capable switch for the first time too. So you can do things like, you know, um, segment different uh, ports into different logical uh, um, uh, interfaces and, and, you know, have the security team on one and the network team on the other, for example. I've deployed open gear for a few customers and been really happy, happy with it. And, you know, announcing Docker support and keeping your, uh, you know, administrative files and uh, things like that. Local is a great idea. Um, do you build um, uh, hardened solutions? Like the, the only place I've deployed these so far is environmentally friendly locations. I've got a customer who would uh, love to have something like this uh, out in their uh, manufacturing plants. So hardened devices. And then the other uh, one more question was around your VLAN capable. Is it pure layer two or... Uh, will it do some layer three as well? Uh, yeah, so it does uh, layer layer two and layer three. Um, and um, in terms of the that's the VLAN, and in terms of the um, the hardened solutions, so the the boxes themselves um, aren't necessarily kind of um, you know environmentally built for environmental extremes. I I don't have the uh, the the temperature uh, range tolerances um, uh, in front of me, but they're on the website. Someone could probably check them and post them in Slack right now. Um, but I will say that they are solid state. They're completely fanless, just as as before. So they're actually um, they're they're pretty they're pretty um, uh, hardy, I guess. Um, uh, just you know, just being the, the the base the base model type appliances. Uh, quick question, Robert. Um, looking at these for kind of remote sites, are we? focusing strictly on the console support or are we looking at power support as well? Yeah, so they do um, they do support uh, PDUs. So um, um, unlike other, other vendors, we don't actually try and build a, a kind of a hybrid PDU management appliance. We What we do instead is we support all the major vendors' PDUs, whether it be APC or Servitec or, or what have you. Um, and you can um, uh, actually just plug in a, a console port um, to the to the PDU, and then you can uh, map a, a PDU port to a console device, for example. So if you're logged into that um, Cisco router and it's locked up, or you want to kind of get into ROM on or something like that, you can actually do a do a hard reset through the PDU without having to kind of break your flow and go into a different management um, interface. Okay, so you're going to do the power support through a managed PDU, and that can be either serial console or Ethernet based. That's correct. Yeah, it can be uh, okay. yeah serial or, or Ethernet, and typically Ethernet they, they usually talk SNMP, but yeah, a few of them okay. talk some other different things. Oh, who knows these days? But thanks very much. Yeah, and with these uh, with these uh, these models with the built-in switch port means you can actually connect directly through to the the PDU management port, so you can take it off take it off the network, free up a switch port, and you've also got it kind of you know secured and, and resilient um, behind behind uh, the the OpenGear NetOps console server. Perfect. So Thank crack. you. Thanks. I might crack on because, um, oh, sorry. Yeah, I was just, well, uh, go for it. Just a real quick question on that. Um, with the capabilities that the new platform offers, uh, especially being able to run Docker images and that type of thing, has there been any work around building synthetic uh, test 
uh, clients that actually run on these four four testing network services in those remote locations? Uh, yeah, uh, things like iPerf and things like that. That's a pretty common um, way, you know, common application for for Docker. Um, uh, beyond that, um, we haven't actually developed something anything ourselves, but we have had our users run, you know, you know, MTR and iPerf, the usual kind sure. of things you use for for you know making sure your networks. Okay, okay. but there's no integration into Lighthouse or anything like that for that. Not not cur not currently kind okay. of as a NetOps module, but there's no reason why you can't run you know t a pair of containers and have them talking over the the VPN or over the cellular that you get that for free as part of our fabric. They literally you can just address using the the VPN um, address of, of Lighthouse and, and that's kind of gonna gonna route over your cellular. So that would be a okay. pretty quick way to do that. Thank you. Oh, yeah, so we've talked a bunch about the hardware, a little bit about the software. So the, sorry, the only other point I really wanted to make is now we've gone x86. It means, you know, we've got a, a fully new um, software stack. Um, and that means we've been able to adopt a lot of these kind of best-in-class um, uh, technologies. So really, the the NetOps console server, I guess, feels a lot less like kind of a, a you know, a traditional network appliance or an embedded device and more like just, you know, your... Um, kind of um, uh, a, a modern Linux system. So things like we're using Firewall D um, for our um, implement our firewall stack. We've wrapped that with a nice API and everything like that. Um, and NF tables under the hood, which is nice and performant. Um, we've got uh, an alert system that runs on the box and we've uh, implemented that using uh, salt stack. And we've upgraded our IPsec capabilities to like V2 um, with strong swan on box now too. Um, and so one point that I did skip over up the top there, um, I did talk about the TPM and secure boot and the encrypted storage. Um, another nice feature that we've added is we've actually got this dual config and dual image partitions on the NetOps console servers too. So now if you do a remote upgrade of your out-of-band um, console server, um, it actually has the ability to detect if something went wrong, um, you know, if there's a power blip or some configuration fail to migrate or something like that. So when it goes to boot into the, the new image, if something's gone wrong, it can actually roll, roll itself back to your to its um, last known good state, which is pretty handy, you know, since it's the last ditch uh, entry point in your network. And if it's on the other side of the country, it's always good to know that it's kind of, it's, um, it's, it's, it's got you covered there. Um, we talked a little bit about, uh, or probably talked a lot about Docker. So it has a Docker support, so you can run Docker containers on your um, NetOps console server itself. Um, things like automation agents and telemetry agents seem to be the most common at the moment, but um, I'm sure lots of other killer apps will um, emerge. And also our OpenGear NetOps modules that I'll demo um, today. A uh, few new soft, more software features. Cellular is easier to set up. We've got the VLAN um, uh, configuration as well. One of my favorites is this console auto discovery feature. So really, if you've ever kind of, you know, racked and stacked a console server, especially a high density one, 48 ports, um, and plugged all those cables in, then you've got to go and label all those ports so they match the actual devices that you've that you plugged in, um, that you've connected up. Well, console auto discovery effectively automates that entire process. Um, it goes out and, and probes the connected um, console for, for the host name effectively. Um, so that's really useful for initial setup, obviously, but also if, say, some remote hands accidentally plugs port 5 back into port 11 or something like that, um, you can actually run that on a schedule. So um, next time it runs, it'll automatically update the labels and kind of become this real-time source of truth for your, your out-of-band connectivity. Um, and all those labels will automatically get bubbled up into um, to Lighthouse as well, which is kind of nice. Um, and finally, the UX. Yeah, it's a new software stack. It's got a new modern UI, and we've added dark mode. Um, so, I mean, you know, dark modes, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of trendy, but also it's super useful for the, for the 3 a.m. you, um, if you've got your pager going off, um, at, at, uh, you know, three o'clock in the morning and, and, uh, you're trying to fight network fires, um, then you don't really want to be blinded by your management system. So we've got you covered with dark mode there. Um, and, oh, did I mention we've got Docker on box? I, I think I may have. Um, so you can really add whatever capabilities you want and we encourage our users to do that kind of thing.